Hi, I'm Jim, and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop. And I had a viewer get a hold of me about, he wants to adjust or at least check his valve clearance on his engine. He has an, an overhead valve engine. And it really is not that hard to do. You just need a couple basic hand tools. We're gonna pop this cover off first. I put some kind of a tray under it because you're going to get some oil leakage because there's typically oil up in this cover, which is good. <laughs> you want to keep your valve oiled up. There's a couple of tools that will help you do this that will make the job a little easier that I've found. Pretty clean in there. Like I said, the guy that had this took excellent care of it. Now I've already got the spark plug wire off and I got the plug loose. We're just going to take it out of here. I'm going to do some work to this engine anyway and this is one thing I would, uh, would have done is adjust the valves on it along with a new spark plug. I'm gonna drain the oil, flip it upside down, and take the sump off of the bottom of the engine and check the bolts in the connecting rod on the, for the cap. Briggs and Stratton's have problems with them coming loose. And I also wanna check, this is a what do they call it? Anti-vibration system inside this engine. Well, I had one engine of mine that was a pretty nice engine and the anti-vibration thing broke and came out through the bottom of the block. So I wanna check that out, make sure that's okay. But to check these valves, I have the engine sitting on the drive disc because I just pulled it out of took it off the machine to work on the machine. Then I set it up on a couple of 4x4s so I can turn the drive disc and rotate the engine. Now I can look right down in this spark plug hole and see the top of the piston. You can see the valves moving a little bit. And you can feel it when you get to top dead center it's going to want to go beyond almost by itself or really easy. So you can turn that back and forth and get it right up on the top and that makes both of these loose. They feel a little too loose. Now you can use, I got a 5 8 wrench, but with the slop, got a viewer trying to get a hold of me, the slop in the wrench is going to give you problems. I like to use a crescent wrench that I can put on here and tighten it up tight so there's no play in it. Also, I like to use a set of these. They look like Allen wrenches, but they're not. They're little torques. Where's my camera? And you need a number 20. And this also has too much play in it. And it's going to give you problems when you're trying to hold this nut and lock this down to keep it in the position you want it. So I like to use that little Allen wrench. It works much easier. But I'm not going to say you're not going to have to do these two or three times to get it exactly where you want it. Now, according to my slip I got here, I want four, I better check that, make sure I get it right.
Where am I? I'm way down here. I want four thousandths on the intake <coughs> and six thousandths on the exhaust. It's kind of easy to tell which is which. The exhaust valve will be right up here by the hole where the muffler is. This is the intake, this is the exhaust. So I want 6,000 on this one. Just want to get a little drag. That's all you need. Then, fun part, trying to get this wrench on there without turning that nut, and they turn very easily. That's not too bad, really. I got drag, you can feel it catching. So now what we want to do is we want to use this and lock it down good. And again, hold the nut. Now, for the intake valve, that is pretty sloppy. And these things have a tendency of loosening up. It, it's something you might want to do every couple of years, especially if it starts running rough or it's backfiring. Uh, this could be the issue. Yeah, that's pretty loose. The sixth style goes in there with very little resistance. So we want to bust this loose. Not bad right there. Now if we can do this without that nut turning. It's not bad. Could be a little bit tighter, but... The sixth hour will definitely not go in there. So I'm going to say that's not bad. Four fits pretty good. And the six fits pretty good. That's all there is to it. Plain and simple. Now, put the cover back on. And you're golden. Just make sure you put it back on the right way. Because otherwise... Your numbers won't be where you can read them. And most of the time, you can do this without replacing the gasket.
and that's it. Now, what I would like to do is point out a issue that Briggs and Stratton's engines have. Um, I don't know if other manufacturers use this. I know uh, I know uh, almost all the Briggs do. I want to get this down off of this four by four. I have four by four and a, a piece of three quarter inch. So I want to turn this and show you what you want to get rid of. Let me get you up here real close. This is the problem right here. I believe I have oil in here so I can't take it out. Yep, it's full of oil and it looks pretty much brand new. And I noticed the date, whoever changed the oil, probably at the dealership, because he took this in to have it serviced. He didn't do anything to it. Uh, somewhere here on this oil filter. Has a date on it of 3-21, wait a minute, 3-22, 21. So this oil was last changed in 2021, which isn't really that bad because I bought this two years ago. That's 22, 23. This is February of 24. I think he took this in when he had issues with it and he told him to service it. And then they told him that, well, it's not really worth fixing. So I will be changing the oil, well, obviously, because I have to take the bottom of the engine off. And uh, when I do that, I'll definitely do a video on it. Now, I've had a lot of people ask me, on the side of my dipstick tube, there is a little square box. What is that for? Right here. Pretty sure you can see that. That is for a voltage regulator. Snappers don't usually use it. They just, they're charging all the time. Now, does it overcharge your battery? I don't know. The stators in here aren't really that big, so I don't think it's a problem. But this thing, I rebuilt my boss's machine. This is how you drain your oil. It's plastic. You turn it and you pull it out. It's kind of convenient, but it's extremely dangerous. When I got my boss's machine done, the engine sat on his machine. This was the back of the machine. He got done mowing his yard with it and he backed it into his garage. Now he's got an older car in there that he's restored and his wife parks in the garage and he had a radio arm saw and a bicycle and when he backed in he hit the bicycle the front tire now what could that do luckily when he backed in he was parked in the middle of the garage and he backed over top of the floor drain well luckily he kept going until he was past the floor drain. And when this little crappy piece of plastic hit the front tire of that bike, it broke it. All the oil ran out of his engine. When he came out the next time to mow his yard, he noticed all the oil in front of the snapper running towards the floor drain. So he pushed the machine out and he looked and this had broken off. Now, if he would have stopped over top of the floor drain, he would have hopped on it, started it up, took off, and burned up his engine. These things, get rid of them. All you need to do is you go down, 
and you buy yourself a, I use a two inch long by three eighths pipe nipple. You screw that in the block. Now you don't put a coupling on here and a plug. It makes it too long. When you stand your machine up on your bumpers, this is going to hit. I use a cap. And this one is a, a little bag. I can pop it open. It's just a cap. It does not have to be galvanized. If you can find a black pipe, use that. It's going to be full of oil. It's not going to rust on the inside. This is, this is galvanized too. And I use a galvanized cap. Whatever you want to buy. But please, get rid of that. It's kind of convenient because it's made. You can plug a hose onto this and put it in a bucket. I'm telling you, I'd rather clean up the mess on my floor than to blow up my engine because this broke on me. Or bump something and have it turn and start leaking. So do yourself a big favor and get rid of that. <laughs> so that is how you adjust your valves. It's very simple, easy to do, and um, it doesn't take that long. And a dealer is going to charge you anywhere from $45 an hour to a man in Florida told me their dealership charges $150 an hour. And that's a one hour minimum if it only takes them 10 minutes to do it. So I hope I can save you some time, money, and frustration, as one of my fellow YouTubers always says. Check her channel out. She's called, it's called Chick Canic. Very knowledgeable woman. Her and her husband has owned a small engine repair shop in Arkansas, I believe, for almost 20 years and super busy. They've just put up a building in their property and they moved into the build, their own building. And uh, she puts out at least one video a week, sometimes two. Great channel to watch and uh, pick up some ideas and tips. So until next time, work safe, have fun, and I'll talk to you soon. So long.